Our next speaker is Atafaya Samadi Naya, Dr. Naya, and she is the co-founder and vice president of uh, Iraqa Solutions and is also the communications officer for the Canadian uh, College of Health Leaders. So would you welcome uh, Dr. Naya to come and speak. And thank you for coming to IHF 39. It is my pleasure to be here among you. It's an honor. Uh, you are our, um, our ambassadors. You take our research results and you change it to practical matters that are affecting our healthcare system. So thank you for coming to this session. You are coming across the group to Chicago, so it is an honor for us to welcome you. I'm originally from uh, Iran. I studied medicine. I came to Canada two years ago. I studied healthcare administration. I'm a doctor of medicine and doctor of health administration. I also pursued a clinical research program, so I connected medicine and management using the research tools that we have. I, these are my contact information. I have included all the resources that I published based on the res research results in this uh, particular presentation and on my LinkedIn, so you can access them for free. Uh, they are uh, open access publications. Um, I just would like to thank all those people and organizations who helped me and all of us up today. We at least have nine people around us who hold us um, and um, make us proud. So um, these are the individuals, my chair and my mentors. You can access them later on. Canadian College of Health Leaders, American College of Healthcare Executives, American Hospital Association, and um, many other organizations helped us to reach into this point at this room and talk about the matters uh, related to healthcare and patient care. So. What we sometimes forget is that as leaders, we also need researchers, we also need the data. The data coming to an organization called OECD, or Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, they assess the data that we provide to them, analyze it, and they have different committees, and they provide um, advice for governments of OECD members and non-OECD members. So any change in one of these countries just distributes to others. So that's why we are here. We are hoping that we could make a difference. And they have their recommendation for governments. So and these are the list of members of OECD. In Canada, we have a very interesting situation. In each province, we have a different healthcare system. So we are dealing with a few healthcare system in a country. And so you see here, we have a different health spending for different provinces in Canada. Financing healthcare system in Canada is mostly public, but physicians and hospitals directly organize their financing with the government. So government is, is third party for physicians and hospitals. But hospitals and physicians do not have contracts directly. So basically they are em employees of the government. So these are basically some details that I just provided for, for your future reference. Um, most of the physicians are paid for performance, but we have different uh, payment system in Canada as well. Hospitals, they have a capital budget and they are trying to accommodate all the needs of patients within that budget. But physicians are trying to make more money but creating more services by paying for performance. So there is a conflict here. So we wanted to see how hospital physician relationships work in Canada. We, I, I visited a hospital in Ontario. Physicians were fighting with hospital CEO and the emergency room was empty for a few days and patients were affected. So that was a click for me. This is an area that I could make a difference. And so the general problem that has 
uh, caught my eye is that physician-hospital relationships are directly affecting quality of patient care, but we didn't know the situation in Canada. And we didn't have any research study. We had many research studies in OECD countries, including US, UK, and other countries, but nothing in Canada, just a few case studies. What, what is important is that um, patient care strength is directly related to the interprofessional relationships of physician leaders and non-physician leaders. And this is a wake-up call for uh, most of the planners. If these relationships are neglected, then quality of patient care is affected and the budget depletion is, is the result of that um, in cooperation. So something that came to my mind is whether these relationships are causing um, medical errors. And, and I searched the literature, that was it. We invest in quality improvement of physician-hospital relationships we invest in quality improvement of patient care, and eventually we invest in quality investment on healthcare uh, system and our budget management. So I have done some research, and 20% of physicians across Canada, that's 60,000 physicians, 20% of them are not satisfied with their hospitals. And this is a red flag. So, but when we come to the results here, those physicians who are satisfied, they are twice as satisfied with their other relationships. Nurses, patients, so they're happier in their workplace and more productive. This is basically showing you that their study results, um, their study was called Canadian um, National Study of Interprofessional Relationships between physicians and hospital administrators. It was sent to 4,000 leaders across Canada, and many organizations helped us to reach that goal we wanted to. Basically, we wanted to show that the red flag is maybe, maybe, some of the medical errors is because of the lack of cooperation between healthcare system in clinical area and healthcare system in business area. Physicians say there are many obstacles to patient safety. And what, when we look at the cost of medical errors in Ontario, which is one of the Canada's provinces, in 2009, $125 million was spent on um, uh, medical errors. So when we look at the percentage, it's about 40% of the healthcare budget in Ontario but the hospitals and physicians together just count for 36% of the budget. So there is a very, very crucial uh, percentage that we can improve if we improve physician-hospital relationships. There are different terms used for physician-hospital relationships. In this particular research, I use interprofessional relationship between physician and hospital administrators, so I, re I refer to it as ERF. These are the, uh, what, what we learn today in every speaker presentation is that patients are at the center of care. And most of those patients are our family members and our, our colleagues, our neighbors, our acquaintances. This is a very interesting slide. 4,000 healthcare readers had their ideas and they come up with this one. They consider hospital physician relationships as the key to the success of healthcare system. And no one, no one is agree. This is a very, very interesting finding of this study. And they consider physicians as, as partners mostly and some of them as contractors. So but when we, we do some assessment, we realize that there are differences in perception of the healthcare leaders of the quality of physician hospital relationships in Canada. So non-physician leaders are very satisfied with these relationships. Then it comes to physician leaders, so you see the decrease. Then we go to seniority. Senior level leaders are very satisfied, but their mid-level leaders do not see eye to eye with them. When we come to physicians, majority of physicians do not consider physician hospital relationships as collaborative. But most of the hospital administrators or managers seem 
to think that these relationships are very collaborative. So this is an area that planners could focus. There's a gap here. And when we consider four levels, we have senior level non-physician leaders on the top. They are the most satisfied. And then we have mid-level non-physician leaders, senior level physician leaders, and at the bottom, we have clinical leaders, mid-level physician leaders. They are the ones that work with patients, work with administrators, with managers. They have so many requirements, just impending on them every day. This is a slide you can download. There is a link here I provided for you. That was presented in one of the previous uh, uh, conferences I had. When we have some of the factors and we want to see which one of these factors are the most influential factor on quality of hospital physician relationships, it was very amazing. I was expecting the financial or technology comes at, at the top, but that wasn't the case. Most of the leaders consider teamwork and communication, as you see, teamwork and communication. And leadership as the most important factors affecting the quality of doctor-manager relationships. And that's amazing. So when I put all these factors together and I consider a different type of analysis, again, teamwork and communication came to the top. And that was one of the, one of the surprises of this study. This is another um, poster I prepared for a different conference. I provided the link for you. You can have access to it. The benefits of the healthcare improving PHR or ERF or doctor-manager relationship, 84% of participants consider improving quality of patient care as the most important um, uh, effect of improving PHR. And this is amazing. We are trying to reduce this, the budget of healthcare system by reducing the payment to physicians, reducing their salary, reducing their their uh, services, but that's not the case. If you improve physician and hospital relationships, if you make physicians happy in their workplaces, if they feel valued, they improve patient care and they, they save the budget. And they, they feel included, they, they feel proud of being part of the, their organization. So some of the barriers that they considered, and most of them, most important one is the time demand that the administrators put on physicians and physician leaders, and most of the time the meetings are during the, uh, the working hours. So what physicians are requesting is whether they could be webinars, whether they could be web-based meetings. There are so many technological uh, advancements nowadays. It doesn't have to be during the patient hours, patient care hours. So uh, they're asking not to have a meeting from 9 to 5 p.m., please. And physicians do not get paid for administrative works they do. They do not uh, get reimbursed. So that's kind of a, a advice we receive from administrators, from senior administrators. And that's, that's a surprise. They want physicians to be reimbursed for the work they do. We would like patients to go home safely, and mostly our, our families, our, our friends. Um, what they suggested, these leaders across all provinces of Canada and even territories, top north, they suggested dialed leadership. And we see this dialed leadership in many, many literature coming, many conferences. The collaboration of clinical leaders and non-clinical leaders is the key to the success of the healthcare system. If this is the only message that I, I request you to transfer to your organization is that please include the clinicians into your planning from the step one. They want that. And, and that's, they also want to have a 360 uh, evaluation for all leaders. And one thing that comes up is please do not choose physician leaders based on their mark of their rotations or uh, have them some training and choose, choose them based on their leadership training. So the message that comes from this whole presentation, and I also provided all the references for you, is teamwork and communication is the most important factor in improving quality of physician-hospital relationships or doctor-manager relationship in any organization. It doesn't have to be hospital. So 
It's not money, it's not resources. They know that there are some limited resources, but when someone is, is feeling valued, if they're feeling that they are part of the team, they are asked instead of told, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge difference. They want to be involved, they want to be, they want to help you. That, that's the main thing. And um, so at the conclusion, this is the message that we, we hope that in Canada, as a result of a national study that we have just completed, we could transfer to other OECD and non-OECD countries. You know, investment on quality of physician-hospital relationships eventually leads to quality of patient care, and, and at the end, it saves the budget of hospitals and healthcare system because physicians try to to be involved, they, they feel that they value, their efforts are, are valued. Sometimes even a simple thank you letter, that's what they're asking for. Or maybe a PDF newsletter of the organization instead of going to so many web pages, you know? Just something they could download on their phone and just read uh, on the bus or in, in their um, trip back home. So these are very little uh, details, but it makes a difference. Oh, this is a very uh, interesting plant I had in, in front of my, um, my house. I didn't know what, what it was. I, I just, I, I wanted to take it out and then I said, you know, let's just give it some time and see what it is, you know, after all. And the flower came up and I just, I just used this example. Sometimes the possibilities shows, um, show um, themselves in, in the places that we don't expect them. So, uh, so let's just, uh, uh, if you have budget, please, please invest in physician-hospital relationships. Thank you very much. These are the references. Uh, I have some publications and presentations that are all available to you. And there are other references for your, um, for your future. Thank you very much for coming, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Atifa. I've uh, that's a very quick presentation. I'm very glad you've given us the link so we can look at all the slides. So.